Hello everybody and welcome to Kelly House. This is uh, one of our Sunday afternoon with programs. Every April through October for several years now we've had um, a gathering and it's usually a presentation with something to do with history and uh, over the years we've gradually worked our way up to history that we more or less remember. Hopefully we remember this well. And um, Kelly House is a nonprofit museum and we appreciate your support by coming today. If you're interested in becoming a member, we do have the membership forms and also if you'd like to be a docent, it's a wonderful experience to uh, welcome the visitors who come on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday for a few hours and uh, we would love it if a few of you would be interested to do that. You can contact me afterwards if you'd like or know more about it. Um, today oh, we have a presentation uh, from Camille Parsons. And as you all know, she is our, our leading current historian and person in the world of dance on the coast for many, many years. And if we go back to 1979, am I correct? That's 35 years ago. Camille started her second story studio. No, that's not how it goes, but I'll tell them. Okay. <laughs> I, I won't try to redo anything then. I'll be, I'll be quiet. But I will say that we're lucky today to have Terry Vaughn filming the um, program. If anyone would like a copy of the DVD afterwards, you can either contact him or contact our office and we will get you a copy. And um, I think without further ado, we should just welcome Camille. But I am going to, per your instructions, play the yeah, show. Yeah, I want to say a few things first. Oh, you do? <laughs> Before you play it, yeah. Um, Hi everybody, thanks so much for coming. Um, I want to thank the Kelly House for uh, inviting me to do this. It's been a, quite an interesting journey uh, putting this all together. And I want to thank Mary Charlebaugh, who is my new friend, who's just been fabulous in helping me um, sort of corral all this and put it in some kind of thing that makes sense. <laughs> At least I think it does. And she's been wonderful. She put together this little, it's about a three minute little film. And so we're going to watch that, and um, it's it's really nice to be part of the local history. <laughs> so I'm going to talk after we watch this. So. Okay, great. So we we'll get the um, volume up first. <laughs>
see, that was a real labor of love. Thank you, Mary. That's really. I dug up all the pictures, but she made it. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Okay, well, I'm just going to kind of talk about things from the beginning. I've actually been teaching longer than 35 years. <laughs> I started teaching here in 74. I, um, I had always wanted to be a dancer, so I did that. It was really intense. I trained like a racehorse. And then when I met my future husband, I was like, I want to explore other things in my life besides just dancing. Our life turned on a dime. We ended up moving up here and got married, had my daughter, and all that. Didn't dance for three whole years. And then I went, Where's the dance studio around here? <laughs> and uh, she says, Oh, you got to call Jeannie Doe, who's sitting right there, one of my very good friends. And she had Nichols Lane Dance Studio out, out Little Lake Road here. And uh, beautiful wood floors and just a really nice space. And um, I said, well, who's dancing? And she goes, well, there's a group of people that you know rented every week. You should come and dance with them. I said, OK. So I go, and um, I walk in, and, and there's these people, and they're like, running and throwing their bodies against the wall and rolling on the floor and seeing where the gravity takes them. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> what to do with that? <laughs> so I decided to teach. <laughs> I just was like, you people need to learn that. Anyway. Um, <laughs> just not, not to laugh at people who do that. I mean, no. obviously there's many different, dance takes many, many, many different forms, and people who do it, do it for a lot of different reasons. And I didn't mean to make fun of them, but uh, my jaw was down to here. I was like, what? So anyway, um, so I started teaching some classes at Nichols Lane, just a little few here and there. And um, I met, first of all, a wonderful young man, Eric Pitsenbarger, whose parents started the Café Beaujolais, actually, oh, wow. here in Mendocino. And um, he and I just really clicked, and we started um, going down to L.A. and to the Bay Area to take disco partnering classes and stuff was during that era. 1979, something like that, or 70, no, 77, 78. Anyway, and um, anyway, we had this really incredible creative con connection that is very really informs my choreography today. It really has a lot. It was based on um, animation, actually, and um, not animator style now that you see that where they do machines, but like uh, cartoons, you know. And so. Um, you know, so that was a really big thing in my life because I think everybody starts off, you know, copying their teachers. That's how you learn. And then at some point you want to go, oh, I want to say this. You know, and you have to depart from your teachers and be brave enough. And I think I wasn't brave at all. I was just up here. I didn't have any, <laughs> anybody else here. So anyway, uh, so we developed our, you know, the style that I have today was really from my work with Eric. I also met Nancy Harris, so I'm really sorry he's not here today. She is such a big, big part of um, everything that I've done. Um, we met at Nichols Lane dancing in the classes, but then we also, when my daughter was two and a half and her daughter was about the same age, she was teaching for Kinderhouse Montessori School, and I started teaching dance there in exchange for my daughter's tuition, and Nancy and I started working together. And then in 1979, Donald Strauss owned, opened City Center Dance Studio, which is where um, Family Hands is now. That was the, the first um, commercial dance studio since I've been here, anyway. And um, it was in operation for five years. And, and during that time, Nancy and I really started um, working together on everything. We taught together, we choreographed together, and that's actually the first year of the dance concerts, 1979. The, the dance concert predates Second Story Studios by five years because it started at City Center. And um, uh, Nancy and I were both single moms at this point, and we, we really were really good friends, and we really worked together to make everything happen. And um, uh, Donald Strauss then decided to, um, oh, I have a funny story about City Center first, I've got to tell you. That's pretty funny. Um, before City Center opened, I was trying to teach tap dance classes at various places. And everywhere I went, they yelled at me for ruining their floors. <laughs> and, and it was just, it was really a problem everywhere that I went. I was just like, 
you can't do it anymore, sorry, you have to leave. <laughs> so um, anyway, so at City Center we had probably between 16 and 20 four by eight sheets of masonite that we would put down on the floor for our tap glasses and um, put them together with strapping tape. And it was a phenomenal thing to put this floor down and to pick it back up. And one day we were all dancing on it, and we, we did like a three-step turn and like that, and the whole floor went, shh, <laughs> <laughs> us on it. it was, oh, whoa! <laughs> anyway, um, so anyway, in 19, the end of 1984, <coughs> Donald decided he wanted to go back east and work on Broadway doing props and sets and things like that. So he sold the building, and Nancy and I were like, we had really viable classes at this point. We had, you know, really good classes. And um, so we um, looked around and we found the space that is now Second Story Studios. And it opened in March of 1985. So this next March, it'll be 30 years old. And we renovated a four-bedroom apar uh, apartment into this dance studio. And um, uh, through the years, we've had the most incredible teachers come through. Um, and I'm going to honor, first of all, Nancy, because um, you know she and I really formulated our whole concept of teaching um, based partly on Montessori on Orfka Dai work that we did with chants and rhythms and things like that. But also, we just really put a lot of energy into figuring out how we wanted to teach these classes and how we wanted to inspire the children and to um, you know, how we wanted the classes to go, how, how, what, what our you know, goal was. And um, I have a mission statement here for Second Story Studios, which I'm going to read because it kind of pretty much says what, what I've been trying to do and what we started. Since 1985, Second Story Studios has been the home and heart of dance instruction in Fort Bragg. We offer the highest quality of dance education through classes structured upon basic technique and joy of achievement. Whether our students wish to simply gain poise and self-confidence or to pursue the dream of a dance career, we have strived to offer the opportunity for the creative self-expression that comes from encouragement and excellent training. And then uh, we had a wonderful teacher um, for a number of years, Nona Baker. She came and uh, she actually came uh, when we were teaching at City Center and um, she was just fabulous. She taught tap and she taught ballroom. And she always brought the best energy to her classes. Just, and I love, my best memory of her is in her beautiful little dresses that she would come teach ballroom. <laughs> Just a uh, very elegant, wonderful, wonderful person. We lost her in 1983, unfortunately. And we all miss her today. It's really, she was just wonderful. Um, we have another teacher here who also taught at the studio, Annie Lee, is here. And in many dance concerts also. And um, I should also mention that um, Nancy and Annie and I, um, who else, I remember, taught for College of the Redwoods. And our studio was actually built on, from support from College of the Redwoods, as was Gloriana, I might mention, <coughs> and other things. You know, we had tremendous um, support from Gloriana actually in our community during the, in the 80s. And um, anyway, so we, we all taught for the college, and, that, and I taught for the college myself for 30 years. Um, okay, and I want to talk about Serafina. Serafina's sitting right over there. <laughs> Serafina and I met when we were eight years old, next to each other in Madame Olga's ballet class <laughs> out of Woodland Hills in Southern California. And. Um, uh, then, when we were both 13, we both auditioned for Victor Moreno for his dance company, which was, uh, was originally called Victor, Mo Victor Moreno Spanish American Ballet, and then it was called San Fernando Valley Civic Ballet. And we both were accepted to the company. So every Saturday, we danced with the company, go across town, and do classes and rehearsals, and we did wonderful performances, full length ballet, Swan Lake, Capricho Espanol, all that kind of stuff. And um, I don't know how many years we were there, I don't know, three or four or something, we danced together there. And then we lost track of each other. I went off, I found jazz. Uh, that was it for me. <laughs> I, I loved ballet and I still to this day love ballet dearly, but I, I found a, a calling to do jazz and to tap also. I just kept been tapping my whole life. Anyway, so I went off in a different direction than Serafina. And, um, 
Many years later, I was up at Second Story. I don't know. Can you tell me what year this would be, Serafina? Two thousand sixteen years ago. <laughs> yeah, no, many anyway, years ago. Yeah. I was up at the studio doing a dance jam, and um, she and Joel walked in, and uh, you know we didn't recognize each other. We hadn't seen each other in years. She, her name. Can I tell you what your name used to be? Serafina. Yeah, her name was different. <laughs> <laughs> And she had red hair. Anyway. Okay. Oh, and I'll stop there. I won't tell you. Anything. Okay. Anyway, so then we started talking, you know, like, where did you study? And blah, 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 blah. And Victor Murray, and all of a sudden she looks at me and she goes, Camille? <laughs> and anyway, so we, we, found, we found each other again. And she's been teaching at the studio pretty much ever since then, yeah. uh, teaching the children's ballet program. And so then what happened was, um, one of, the, uh, one of the other teachers I want to honor is Mary Knight, Mary Knight Morris, who taught at the studio for four years. We had a nice collaboration. I also taught uh, for Mendo Ballet, and I also, she commissioned a piece for me for them. And um, she taught for four years at the studio, taught the children's ballet program before Serafina. And um, uh, she's just an amazing teacher and good friend. And um, anyway, she had some health issues and had to leave. And um, and about that time, I, I said to Serafina, I wonder what Victor's doing, Victor Moreno. So I found out where he was, and I called him up, and he said, I'll come teach your ballet program. <laughs> and <laughs> so he came up and taught for four years at the studio as well. And that was just really amazing. And we were all, because he danced with the Valley Rooster Monte Carlo, he was, you know, a really, um, you yeah, know, he partnered Maria Talchief and Alexander Danilova and all those dancers, if you know who they are. And um, so it was really fabulous to have him at the studio. And um, uh, it was, the thing that was really special to me was that my daughter, Lily, um, got to study with him for four years, and she studied very inten intently with him, and had a really incredible experience studying with him. And that, so that was a really nice thing for me to uh, be able to provide that for her. And uh, Victor experienced health issues and had to leave after four years, and he has since passed away. But um, then we had Melinda Miller Clawford also come to the studio. Another person that probably many of you know her. She's just. Um, Larger than life, <laughs> or Melinda. And um, so she also taught for four years at the studio, and she's been off doing other things. So um, we also have today in the, in the audience, we have Heather Acarius, who is currently teaching at Second Story. A wonderful teacher. I'm so happy to have her on the staff. She's teaching contemporary and point pre point. Uh, she comes to us from Nevada City, Grass Valley area, where she had her own studio there. and. Um, she has another job that she does full time, but she still manages to come teach classes for us, and um, really glad to have her. And also, for me, it's lovely because you know she used to have her own studio, so I can call her up and go, <laughs> and she goes, <laughs> so <laughs> there's that. <laughs> anyway, so so the studio has been made up of a lot of different cast of characters over the years. And I'm really sad that Nancy Harris isn't here today. Um, I guess she was too busy to come, but I just, I personally wished on her in a very big way because, um, you know, she, she did some very amazing things. She uh, retired from the studio in 1998, so I've been soldiering on for the last 15 years by myself, <laughs> for which I'm not happy. <laughs> just teasing. Okay, so the dance concert. Um, what, we, what our vision, Nancy and my vision, for the dance concert was, okay, we've all seen like really dreadful kitty recitals. They're, they're, <laughs> they're a dime a dozen. I've been in them. I've seen them. I know what they're like. And they can be really bad. And um, so we wanted to do something better than that, make it a little step up from a recital. And of course, you know, there's... Yeah, well, anyway, once you're, once you're caught in auditorium, that's a game changer anyway. We weren't there for the first three years. We started at Eagles Hall. First three concerts were at Eagles Hall. And then, um, and, and you were in it, and you were in it, and everybody else, and she was in it. So there, Annie, yes, yes. Sharon Hunter, 
Mary Handelin. Yeah. Anyway. So um, we wanted to make it more than a recital by taking the, the three-year-olds who are doing their, doing their first show ever and having some guest artists who may be professional or pre-professional dancing alongside of them and to have a really good staff, lights, tech staff, lights and sound and just, you know, to make it as professional and, and to, for it to have a pace that moved along and was the right, you know, everything. And so we, we um, really worked to make it the best that we could. So for the kids that get to be in it, it's wonderful because, first of all, I love it because it brings together the whole dance community, the people at the studio, but also the other people in the, in the community who are top quality, like um, Circus, uh, Kara Morris, Starkweather, other people have come to us and, and uh, we had Ivory. I didn't have a picture of Ivory and there was our wonderful Hawaiian group that we had for many years, Annie and Diane Larson and... Who else was in that? Uh, Peterson. Maureen oh, Peterson. Peterson. Georgia Lane. And Georgia, speak up. Georgia Lane. No, she was. Oh, whoops. No, no, sorry. Um, it, it's been a little bit fluid. Nona was in it. Nona was in it. Yeah. Nancy Ferrer was in it for a while, too. Mary, yeah. Mary Rogers. Yeah. Yeah. Mary yeah. Rogers. Anyway, it was a wonderful group. And mm -hmm. anyway, so the, we bring together the whole dance community, which is just, it's wonderful. We don't have much opportunity to all connect like that. So. It's so wonderful for the kids that get to be part of the show because they get to spend a weekend with everybody that's dancing, and it's just it's really powerful and it's wonderful. And they, like I said, they ha they get the the wonderful feeling of attaining this goal that they've been working for. I mean, dance is a performing art, and for them to be able to perform it for this uh, this community is a great audience too. We have um, just the best <coughs> audiences here, just like cheer for everybody and you just feel so loved when you're up there and um, the kids get confidence and and um, you know it's just a, they get a feeling of really rising to the occasion and it's just wonderful it's like a, I, I compare it to like a, a slumber party and when it's over after the weekend you go like oh boy you know, I miss all my friends <laughs> uh, I also want to give a, a nod to the Mendocino Children's Fund who has been making dance classes available for children that may need it in the community all these years, and um, they really help a lot, and I'm really grateful. Um, and um, I also want to talk just briefly about Second Story Repertory, which was my love. I did it for seven years. I, I um, One of the things that I, I continually deal with having a dance studio is that more and more and more girls who are the main cast of characters at the dance studio are playing sports. Sports, 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 sports. More sports and more sports and more sports and I'm like, and even our best ballet dancers are like sports, sports, sports. And it, nothing against sports. I'm not a sport person. I, like I told my class the other night, I'm, I'm so sure the ball's going to hit me, it does. <laughs> <laughs> not my thing, but, um, but you know, of course, anybody wants to play that, that's great, I have no problem with that, but it's really been a, a kind of a thorn in my side trying to get dance classes going and like, you know, oh, we'll join after soccer. Well, that ends up being January because they just want to be in the dance concert, so then you got something that's like half a year instead of a whole year, so it's been hard. So I said to myself, okay, well, rather than complaining, what could I do that would be proactive and be, you know, what could I create that would be, so I created the second story repertory. And um, it was um, kind of like a dance club, but like a little intense dancers group. Everybody had to take four classes a week, one ballet, one tap, one jazz, and one um, choreography class with me. And we always did something very theatrical for the dance concert, so that it was kind of... <laughs> she was in it. And, um, and it was also, we would, we would also go out of town and do an overnight to see some great dance performance and everybody get a, like a t-shirt or a bag that says second story repertory. So we, we did that. And, um, and then they would also be part of helping to choreograph for the piece we did for the show. We've done some incredible pieces, like the one where we did a dance through time piece. We did a piece where we took all the TV shows starting with... Um, I What's the first Lucy. one? I love Lucy. On, you know, Lucy yes, yes, on through. Anyway, it was a wonderful, wonderful creative thing that we did for seven years. And then I finally just, I realized that I'm not superwoman. I can't do everything. I guess I had a, I had a partner still at the studio. I might 
feel like doing the repertory again. I miss it. I think it was a wonderful program. But um, anyway, so now we're teaching kids of former students. We're down to that. <laughs> it's really wonderful to, to see that. And um, I'm just really thankful for a, a lifetime of like, livelihood and um, love to share dancing with people. So thank you. <laughs> Anybody wants to ask any questions? I was going to suggest that. <laughs> I will try to answer any. <laughs> I have one. Yeah. How many people in the audience are students? Or have or been. Or have been. Or fellow teachers. Fellow teachers. Teachers. Yes. Well, now's your chance. <laughs> I'd love to hear just a short synopsis of your of, of your life and dance before you got to the coast. You know, like oh. you know, your journey. Okay. Well, you okay? I started dancing when I was four, and um, because my mother always wanted to be a dancer, but she didn't start till she was nineteen, so I was a little late. So she said, "Okay, my kids are going to get dance classes." So um, the first dance studio that I danced at was really interesting. It was called Totten Dance Studios and they would come to your house with this little van and pull up on front of your house and honk the horn and you'd run out with your little bag of, of dance shoes and they'd take you to the studio. And where you had combination classes, 15 minutes of this, 15 minutes of that. Uh, baton twirling I believe was in there as well. <laughs> and um, tap dancing and a little tumbling and a little ballet. And a little, anyway. So that's where I started, and, <laughs> and then um, my sister finally decided she didn't want to dance anymore, so I went on on my own. She didn't want to compete with me, and she was actually, I think, a better dancer, but anyway, that's another story. Um, but anyway, um, then Madame Olga, we danced with Madame Olga, who was interesting, and uh, <laughs> now you saw in that video, um, the man jumping in the air and the man with Marilyn Monroe. That's my teacher, Jack Tigett, who I started dancing with him probably when I was about mm, 10 and in the San Fernando Valley. And he had danced in a lot of movies. He was, uh, he was a cowboy in the movie Oklahoma. He was a chimney sweep in Mary Poppins. He was in Flower Drum Song. He was in a lot of movies and a lot of TV. And um, he was my big inspiration. I just... Uh, love that man. He just had sparkly blue eyes and so much enthusiasm and really good energy. And he just, he, he said to my mom when I was 12, start taking her to auditions. You have to take her to auditions now. And so my mother, he would tell me where the, audi tell my mother where the, where the auditions was and off I went. And uh, the first audition I went to, <laughs> I got called back every day for a week and then got cut at the end and I almost jumped out of the car on the freeway. I was just <laughs> But then, you know, you learn how to do it. You learn how to, you know, not, not take it personally when you don't get it and then you feel great when you do. And I got some, I started getting jobs that my parents wouldn't let me take them because I was too young. Like you can't go to San Francisco for the summer, you're 15 or whatever. So, um, anyway, um, and then I started studying at an, another little aside. I started taking um, Eugene Loring's American School of Dance, taking jazz dance classes there and later on. And it was really interesting to me because the style of jazz dancing before West Side Story came out was very vaudevillian. It was very different, you know. Every, that's the best way I can say it. it was vaudevillian. It was just kind of cutesy, corny, eh. And I mean, I liked it, but it wasn't, it didn't have the power. And once West Side Story came out, it was like, boom, everything changed on the dime overnight. The whole style was animalistic and urgent and strong. And it just, it was like, whoa. Just, I just remember that and I wanted to share that because it really affected me very deeply. I was like, wow. And um, anyway, so I, um, my first dance job that I went off to do um, was right after um, I, I did one year college theater department and then I took off and um, I worked it was, first one was the Ward Ellis dancers and then it became Moralandis. It was at um, 
my first job was at Harris in Reno. And it was a live orchestra, the main room, uh, new show every month, different artist, kind of different opening for Eddie Fisher, opening for Juliet Prowse, opening for whoever, Smothers Brothers, or whoever was coming in. So we did a different show every month. And then they sold it to Moral Landis, and they came in and they auditioned us, and they didn't take me. And I was like, whoa. And then a week later, I, I get a letter going, we do want you, but we want you in Tahoe because you're taller. So I went to Lake Tahoe. And um, they had a bigger, bigger showroom stage thing there, and I danced. I danced there for probably five years. Um, Harris and for Moral Landis in LA as well. It was fabulous. I really had a great time. I have a whole other talk might be all the things that have gone wrong during certain shows, but that's a whole other talk. I have some very funny stories. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, then I uh, let's see. I, I went with another smaller show that was um, four dancers and a singer and a comedian, and we went. Um, Travel all over the United States, and then we went for six months to Asia, and did that. And then I came back, and I said, "That's it. I'm not gonna travel anymore. I'm if I'm gonna stay in LA. If I have to get a temporary office job, if I don't get a dance job, I'm staying in LA. That's it." Then I got a job at Disneyland, yeah. <laughs> dancing, and that was yeah. that was fabulous. Yeah. That was the same kind of format: a uh, a month here, you know, with a sort of like Peggy Lee or Roger Miller or whatever, and then a new show, and um, the women that I worked for, the choreographer, was Miriam Nelson. She actually choreographed the, the dance between um, Kim Novak and, what, who was it, and Picnic. What's his name? William Holden. William Holden. Oh. She choreographed that sexy dance that they did. Anyway, um, every month, different show. Like the first month, it was a circus show. I had to learn how to get on a trapeze, and I had to work with a baby elephant named Baby Marie. That was fun. <laughs> and then, you know, the next month it would be all Shirley Temple tap dancers or whatever. They changed the show every month, and uh, so that was fun. And I also, you know, danced for various shows around LA, Artists and Models Ball or whatever was happening, and then. My life just turned on a dime when I met my future husband, like I said, and we were together for 14 years, and um, he just, we just decided to move up here on a whim, <laughs> and here I am, and the rest you know, so. <laughs> Thanks, Bob, that was a great question. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, well, I guess that's it. Thank you. Thank you. enjoyed your stories and hearing about the history and thank you all for coming again so thank you. welcome thank you.